Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So this is the second in a three pen video series. Uh, if you watched the first video, it was the top 30 fountain pens that I purchased in 2018. Uh, if you have watched that, you will recall that I had purchased 58 fountain pens, which is a staggering amount. Uh, I reduced that 58 down to 30 to to try and work out what was my top 30 fountain pens. And in this video, I reduced by another 10 to show my top 20 fountain pens, eliminating 10 of those fountain pens from the previous video. And then the next video will be my top 10 fountain pens, discarding another 10. So here I wanted to show you today the top 20 pens, and I want to first show you what are the pens that I have discarded to try and reach this top 20. So let me show you those pens now. Now here are the, the 10 pens I have discarded uh, out of the top 20. Now it's incredibly difficult to try and work out what are your favourite pens and there are so many things that, that, that affect that decision whether or not it's the size, the weight, the filling mechanism, how the pen looks, um, how the pen writes. So because I'm discarding these 10 pens out of my top 20, this doesn't mean that I'm going to be selling these pens, and it doesn't mean that I don't like the pens. It's just that I have forced myself to choose the top 20 pens, and then ultimately, in the next video, the top 10 pens. So it's a really difficult decision for me. But Let's just go through these pens. So the first pen that I've discarded is the Danny Trio, and this is the lovely uh, Bamboo Story, and it's in the Tamanuri Kidami finish. It's a whopping of a pen. You can see it's, as a number of friends have said, it's a baseball bat. Um, it really is a large pen. And I love this pen. It's an eyedropper pen. It has a lovely number eight size nib on it. And I love number eight size nibs. Uh, I picked this up at the London Pen Show uh, in October 2018. And it was an impulse buy, like a lot of my pens. And, and I won't lie there. Um, I would have preferred it if this had a medium or a broad nib on. It has a fine nib. And I don't usually write with fine nibs. Uh, unless they're very bouncy nibs. This is a very wet nib. It's it's a um, eyedropper pen as well. But for me, it's a little bit on the crisp side of things. So I decided, because it was going to be difficult trying to reduce these pens, I had to choose more of the pens uh, that were going to stay in the top 20 that not only do I like the look of, like the feel and the size and the weight of, but also the writing experience. So for me, this pen, the writing experience isn't as good as some of my other pens that have made it into the top 20. So that was one of the reasons why this pen hasn't made the cut. The next pen is the Visconti Belgica, and this is a stunning, stunning pen, and it really should be in the top 20, um, really should. There is no reason why I don't like this pen. Uh, I love the weight of it. It's a power vac filler. It has an ink window. It has an 18 karat gold uh, broad nib on there. It writes really well. Um, and I love this pen. To uh, I really do love this pen. The problem is, is that there are other Viscontis and other pens that I like a little bit more. So... This one was a really, really hard decision to make for me because I really wanted to have this in the top 20 um, because it's such a gorgeous pen and, and it writes well. The broad nib is very wet. It's a little bouncy. It's a play, uh, It's an 18 karat gold nib. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a real nice pen to write with. So it ticks every single box. But I can only have 20 pens in the top 20. So... No matter what I do, I have to discard some pens. 
And that brings me on to this one, which is the Visconti Opera Silver Dust. And although I love this pen, I love the, the Silver Dust, there are a number of things, as I mentioned in the Top 30 video, that, that I don't like, and I've mentioned before on the review, is that I would prefer this to have been a Homo Sapiens model, um, and uh, it would have been a little bit uh, larger, um, a little bit wider, a little bit more weighty, and uh, and it would have been round instead of almost like squaring the circle. And uh, I think that would have made it uh, more perfect for me. And probably I would have um, maybe at that point uh, had it in my top 20. Another pen that I've discarded is the Penida. And uh, this comes with a uh, 14 karat gold nib. And uh, this is the quill nib. I love how these Penidas write. Uh, this is the broad nib though. I have a medium nib in the Malachite. This is the Rhodolite version. And I find the broad nib is more firmer. Uh, it's a very juicy wet nib. And I love how it writes. But again, writing experience wise, I like a little bit of bounce to my nibs. So for me, uh, I decided that I would actually, um, I found the Malachite version has more bounce to it because it's a medium nib. So I decided that the Rhodolite didn't make the cut and uh, uh, unfortunately uh, it's not in the top 20. And another one which, which uh, a number of people will will um, think, well, this is, this is kind of strange, this pen didn't make the cut. Uh, this is the Atelier Lusso and this is a Carina model and this is the Black Ice and I love this pen. It is a gorgeous pen. It has a broad uh, Yovo uh, steel nib on it. Uh, it's a stiff nib. They write very wet, very juicy. And I love this pen. I really do love this pen. But in hindsight, I have other um, Atelier Lusso pens and also other pens that I needed to fit in the top 20. So if this, like was the top 30 or top 50 pens this would have made it in there for sure and it was in the top 30 uh clearly but um unfortunately there are other pens and and i can't just put all atelier lucy pens in the top 20 because that would be half the pens um the next one, again, this is a gorgeous pen. This is another Atelier Lusso Carina. And this is the Diamond Nebula. And it has real diamond dust in the body. Again, it's a stunning, stunning pen. I really do love this material. Um, and I love the pen. Again, a broad Yovo nib. And it writes very wet, uh, very juicy wet, um, and uh, very smooth. But again, there were other pens that, I needed to put in that top 20 um, because maybe the writing experience was a little bit better. Uh, plus, I also have um, nine Atelier Lusso pens, uh, as I just mentioned. So that would take up half the top 20. So I had to discard some of these. And I, love, I do love these pens uh, a lot, and I write with them a lot. But for the top 20, I had to um, discard them. Another one is this Leonardo Officina Italiana. This is the Momento Zero Positano Blue. And it is a lovely, stunning resin pen. Uh, and it comes with a gold-plated steel nib. Um, it has a little bit of a, a line variation to it. Um, it's a nice pen to write with. Um, but again there are other pens that have a better writing experience so i had to discard that one and there were there were these two viscontis i picked up somewhat recently in the summer and this is the yellow dawn and i absolutely love this material and i have this in the ducali palazzo and uh this was uh one that i really would love um to have been included in the 2018 um top um 20 pens um but i've had to discard this it's got a 14 cat gold nib um unfortunately it's quite a stiff nib and it was quite dry i've had to floss the tines a lot and it still isn't as nice a writer as i would like it to be so that i had to uh let go uh, of the top 20 
And exactly the same with this, uh, again, another Kalido Voyager. This is the uh, Forest Green version. And again, dry writing nib. Um, and although it's a 14 karat gold nib, it's uh, quite a stiff nib as well. So again, unfortunately, I have better writers. Like, if this was just down to looks alone, I probably would have these in the top 20. The next one is this one, and this is the, the new uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens Evolution. And although I do love this pen a lot, uh, and it writes exceptionally well, I've got a, a 1.3 millimeter stub nib on there. Um, it is a steel nib. It's not a palladium nib, a 23 cap palladium nib. It's not a gold nib. So it's a steel nib. But it's very juicy, very wet, very smooth writer. But again, I do have other pens that write better than this. So for me, I had to discard that pen as well. Um, so really, that's the 10 pens I have discarded. So let's now look at the, the pens that did make it into the top 20. So here's the first set of pens that made it into the top 20. So left to right here, we have um, the Scribo 2 in Noble Green. This comes with a lovely 14 cap medium flex nib. The writing experience for me on this is exceptional. I do love this pen a lot. It really, really writes well. Uh, it's one of my most favourite writers at the moment. Uh, now, that changes over time. I think all of our tastes change, whether or not it's the look of the pen, the writing experience. And likewise, again, the same with this um, uh, Cardinal Red version of the Scribo 2. Uh, and these are from right here. A again, this has a 14 cat uh, medium flex nib on, like the Noble Green, and it writes exceptionally well. So... These are, at the moment, pens that I write with a lot. And then there's a, a newer acquisition, which was the Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove. Now, I'm very surprised at this pen, not only because of how it looks, this Shiny Lines material is absolutely gorgeous. It has a, a lovely 18-karat um, gold nib on there. Um, it's a number eight size nib, although it, you wouldn't notice it here. It's a little bit wider, but the uh, Montegrappa actually pushed the nib in a lot further into the section. Um, it's a good writer. It's very wet, very juicy. It's a medium nib. It has a slight bounce to it, but I really do love the, the feel of this. I love the look of it, and I love how this pen writes. So that made it into the top 20. Another pen is the Speakeasy, and this is a mammoth of a pen. Uh, and I love this material. I love it so much. It's really, really good material. Um, it's a, a mammoth pen. It has a very small ink capacity. Uh, it has a lovely, uh, juicy, wet, very soft and bouncy 23 carat palladium medium nib. And it's a dream to write with. Um, the only downside with this pen is the small ink capacity of around about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 milliliters. Um, and the reason for that is that it has uh, a 6 milliliter compartment here for alcohol, hence the name Speakeasy. So that pen made it into my shortlist because it's an exceptional writer, even though it runs out of ink very quickly. Another one is my Visconti uh, Medici Il Magnifico. And I love this pen. I love the weight of it. Solid silver cap, solid silver piston knob, solid marble as a body, solid silver section. Uh, it's it, the, the pen came writing a little bit dry. It's got a slight bounce to the nib. Uh, it's a 23 cap palladium medium nib. It writes very well now. I floss the tines to improve the ink flow on it. And again, this is one of my workhorse writers uh, at the moment. And another pen that made the cut into the top 20 is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Swirl. And 
I absolutely love the, the not only the the swirl but but this particular pattern on the pen. It's an absolute stunner. Uh I got this with a twenty three cap palladium nib. Um and it does uh it's a stub nib. Um it doesn't it has a little bit of a bounce, not too much of a bounce, um, but it's a nice writer. And again, I I have had this inked up pretty much which I think all of the time since I've got it, uh, and uh, again, it, it's it's not a pen that I've gone to recently. Like th the last, probably the last month, I've been writing less with stub nibs, um, but I I do love how this one writes. So for my 2018 pens, this made it into the top 20, and I have some uh, three Atelier Lusso pens. This one is my lovely uh, Andromeda. This is the King Cobra, and I absolutely love this pen. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous-looking pen. Um, I, I picked, handpicked the material on this pen. Uh, it has a um, steel uh, Yovo nib. It's a broad nib. It writes really well. It's a cartridge converter. And I love this pen. I love the material. It, it's, it doesn't... It, because it's a broad nib, it, it is quite stiff. But it has it's a juicy wet nib, and I'd love how it writes. So that for me made it into the top twenty. The same with my dragon again, an Atelier Lusso, uh, and this is the Andromeda again model. Uh, but again, I love this pen. Uh, it's it's a lovely um, material, hand picked again by myself, and uh, Erica Atelier Lusso turned this into a pen for me. Beautiful material. And that made it into the top 20 for 2018. And then this one, which is the uh, Andromeda Tectonic Seas as well. Again, this material is absolutely stunning. Look at this white here uh, as you just as I rotate the pen in the light. It's, it's an amazing pen. Um, and again, another uh, broad steel Yovo nib. Uh, but again, it's a pen that writes very wet, very consistent, very smooth. And for me, this is a pen that I do like a lot. So for me, this made it into the top 20. And then there's this pen, and this is my Visconti Luxor Obelisk, uh, sometimes referred to as a Luxor 88. Uh, it's an ebonite pen. Um, so it, it's it's had um, uh, these hieroglyphs painted on uh, in, in a macchie and then Yerushi lacquered. And it's a lovely pen, a beautiful pen. Uh, it has a 23 cap palladium medium nib, which is a bouncy nib. I love how this writes, and uh, it's a beautiful pen to write with, to look at, uh, and it feels lovely in the hand. So, again, for me, that was another pen that made it into my top 20 list. So, let's look at the final top 10 pens. So, this may not be any surprise uh, for anybody, but I have uh, a number of these um, Armando Simone Club pens in my top 20 list. These are lovely large pens. They um, they have a number 8 size nib. It's an 18 karat gold nib. Uh, it's the uh, Armando Simone Club um, Magic Flex nib. And this is the Armando Simone Club Bologna uh, extra wild side and these nibs have a lot of bounce to them a lot of flex uh, hence the name magic flex they're not vintage flex but they they really have a lovely writing experience and for me this really does it um, so this pen had to make it into my top 20 list I also have another one here and I have the Arco Verde. Now, I have four of these. I bought four in 2018. Now, I'm only putting one in the top 20. I felt it was only fair. Um, I'm trying to remove duplicate pens where possible if the material was the same. And uh, I have two with rhodium trim, the silver color trim, and two with the gold color trim. So, for me, these really do make the cut. And I love... Uh, these pens. So again, it's it's an Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra, and this is the Arco Verde. Has a number eight size nib on it, and again, these Magic Flex nibs really do write well. Uh, and and these are Bock nibs, and um, 
but uh, they have had a lot of customization done to them too, uh, by Bok to, to um, make them a really lovely writing experience. So that makes it in there as well. I wish I could put the other three in there, um, but I think it's a little unfair. Now on to the Pinida, and this is the La Grande Bellezza Malachi, and this is the medium nib. And this has quite a lot of bounce and, and flex to it, and I really do love this. I love how it writes, um, and this has been a favourite of mine for some time now. Uh, so for me, and the material also is stunning in this. Uh, it ticks all of the boxes again. So for me, that has made it in there into the top 20. Another one uh, is my uh, Stipula Etruria Corsani. And this is a limited edition of 90. This is number 7. And uh, made by Stipula. It's in an ebonite uh, mixed with red resin. And it's a lovely uh, pen. It has a 14 karat gold nib on it. Um, it's a medium nib, it's juicy wet, uh, it has bounce to the nib, quite a bit of flex, and again, it's one of these pens that, for me, ticks all of the boxes. So, and you can see here, this material is really, really stunning here. Um, so, so that, again, makes the top 20. I then have the Leonardo... Uh, Mediterraneo, and this is a beautiful, stunning material, and I've seen this in some of the Montegrappers in uh, the extra 1930s. Uh, it's almost like a, a wave, uh, or, or um, the ocean uh, hitting a beach, uh, and the surf. It's, it's a lovely material, and I do love this material a lot. Uh, and again, this has a 14 karat gold nib, like the Stipula, um, and although... I find this nib, being 14 karat gold, slightly more stiffer than the steel nibs from Leonardo. Um, I do still love how this writes. It's a very wet writer. It does have a little bit of a bounce, only a slight amount of bounce to it. But it's a lovely writer, and uh, this, for me, is a beautiful material. So uh, both of these pens uh, I picked up at the London Pen Show in October 2018. And I love them. I really do. And a couple more pens I picked up were some Omos Arcos. And I picked up this Omos Milord. And um, this is a lovely uh, Arco Brown. Um, I also have an Arco Brown in my Armando Simone Club Bologna Extras. But uh, that wasn't technically purchased in 2018. It was the end of 2017. So unfortunately it didn't quite make the cut. Um, but uh, in terms of purchase anyway. Um, but uh, this this is a lovely um, uh, gold nib. It's, it's a beautiful writer. Uh, and I love how this, this pen writes. I love how it feels, how lightweight it is. It's not an extra flesser belay nib, but it's not far off. It does have some flex to it. So I really do like how this, this pen writes. And then I also have this uh, Omas Paragon as well. And uh, this, again, it writes very well. Uh, I wanted some more Arco Browns uh, in my collection. And uh, again, another uh, gold nib here, 18 karat. But it's a lovely writing nib. And uh, it's a little bit smaller than the um, Milord here, as you can see. Um, but again, I do love it. And then we have these three Visconti Opera Masters here. So we have uh, this Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust. And this material is absolutely stunning. Uh, I really, really do love this material. Uh, and it's it's a beautiful pen. I love the gold trim on it. It has a 23 cat palladium fine nib. Now, the nib I had in it uh, was more rigid. I swapped out for another fine nib in my collection, which had a little bit more bounce to it, and I love how this writes. Uh, so for me, this is a lovely, lovely pen, and I love the Opera Masters. So uh, I really do like this, and um, it's a limited edition pen, and it, again, it ticks all of the boxes, although I rarely do fine nibs, but I put a fine nib in here that I do like. So I think this is probably the only uh, exception now 
to uh, the top 20 is that this is the only pen I'm just checking yeah this is the only pen that I have in the top 20 that has a fine nib and then we have this Opera Master and this is the uh, Trufe exclusive this is the uh, Corvina and uh, this is a, a lovely uh, pen uh, I really do like this it's almost a little bit like a cherry blossom effect uh, going on here in the pen it's a lovely pen. Um, it's uh, I got a, a 23 cap palladium nib on here, a uh, stub nib, and it writes very, very well. Um, the pen is gorgeous to look at and writes well. Um, so again, that made it into my top 20 pens. And then the final pen we have here is again another Truffe exclusive from Visconti. It's the Visconti Opera Master and this is the Stardust and I absolutely love this material. The Stardust material is still, out of the two pens, my most favourite. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous uh, and I love this um, ruthenium trim on it, the black trim. Uh, and again, it's a 23 cap palladium stub nib and it writes very well. Um, so again, this is a, another stunning pen in my collection. I do love this pen a lot. Um, so there you have it. That's now my top 20 pens of 2018. Uh, in the next video, the final video in the series, I am going to discard another 10 of these pens. And that's going to be even more difficult for me to do because it was hard enough to get down to 20 of these pens already. And to to discard another 10 of these pens to find out what are my top 10 pens that I have purchased in 2018. Uh, it's a lovely journey, but it's also heartbreaking for me because I want them all in there, but I can't have them all in there, clearly. Um, it's a top 10 or top 20 or top 30 um, video for a reason. So I will in the next video reduce it down to the top 10 pens and I hope you will continue that journey with me and uh, see what pens make the cut and see what pens didn't make the cut. So thanks for watching, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye. <laughs>